Uh, my wife would like me to make a public announcement that she is not a professional speaker. Right. Does everybody know my wife's not? Okay, great. All right. uh, what do you say, Kelly? Uh, this is uh, this is Care Burton Bowes of the Bushy Fork Burtons, <laughs> formerly of Midtown Roxboro. Um, she's a educator with the Person County School System, and uh, she uh, she's very beautiful and refuses to get prescription glasses. That's all. The, that's all the thing. <laughs> These work. I can read. Uh, we got. Let's pray and get started. Yes, let's. Father, thank you for an opportunity to just share our hearts on being intentional and missional. And thank you for the folks who are um, just willing to share this space with us, share this moment in life with us. Uh, Father, help us um, to edify one another, to be brave enough to ask questions or to interject our thoughts. Thank you for the body of Christ. Uh, may some of her pieces bless the other pieces here in this session. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um, you know, <laughs> I told you guys in the opening session that it was a little intimidating to be asked to, to speak like, you know, you're scared somebody's going to think you're an expert. Well, this will reveal to you I'm not. Um, this will absolutely reveal that what I am is just very intentional. Um walking with Brett for a long time, he actually knows I have a mission statement for pretty much everything. Uh, you know, I have a pastoral mission statement, and I'm just everywhere wanting to make sure that I'm pursuing something intentionally because I discovered that when I lived, you know, in idle, in, in anywhere in my life, you know, I never drifted toward holiness. I always drifted toward antipathy, apathy, sin, so I, I can't trust myself to drift. I can't trust myself just to go along and sort of, you know, I'm going to do the right thing. So I, I just keep creating mission statements. I'm not an expert here either, right? And you'll discover <laughs> that very, very shortly. But what I am is a very intentional guy, or I try to be. Um, so we just thought we'd start out a little bit by sharing a little bit of our story. And, and I'll just go first. You know, I, I was raised in... Uh, a fairly stable home, stable in the sense that my parents were married over 50 years till you know, death did them part. And, uh, you know, we always had plenty to, to, to eat. We always had clothes. We moved a lot in a very small community. Um, we, uh, we always rented farmland. You know, the old-fashioned words would have been sharecroppers. So I grew up on working farm. You know, these people today say, I have a farm. That means they have some grass and some trees. But we had a farm you know, animals and stuff. So what I did learn that I deeply value is I learned a great work ethic. Um, we got up every day and worked. And, um, and so I really treasured that. But what I never got was a spiritual life. Um, we, it wasn't just we didn't go to church. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We didn't talk about the Lord. There was no tenderness, gentleness, respect. There was no expectation. There was no objective place to measure what your character and your morals should be. It was, you know, it was, uh, our house was as in the days of Noah. Every man did what was right in his own sight until someone stronger told him to stop. Um, and that was our moral path. And so, um, a lot of ways grew up great, very blessed, never went hungry. You know what I mean? Very blessed. But in some other ways, it was, uh, it was a desert landscape spiritually. Yeah, and, and I say growing up, I, I always went to church as far as I can remember. And a lot of times with my mom, my dad didn't really go for us to church when we were little except for uh, special occasions like Christmas that I can remember. And they worked a lot, and so I went with my Aunt Joanne a whole lot. And, Brett's um, grandma. And um, when we got old enough, we just said, I, me and my brother, like, we just want to keep going to that church, you know. And my parents was like, we don't care. If you want to go to church, good, go to church. We don't care where you go. So we didn't go with them. And my parents, they're still married. There's going to be 51 years this year. And, and we had everything, everything I always wanted. I think my daddy pretty much made sure I got. <laughs> yeah. And um, I know I'm spoiled. I mean, I go by there every morning and get coffee and most of the time breakfast and sometimes today lunch. They had stew and so they had, it was all. Anyway, so, I mean, it's, they, it was. They burned one together or something. <laughs> we did not. 
And uh, it was just, you know, like my family was, is just great. But we, we didn't have a time of Bible study in my house. And, and um, we would pray sometimes at meals or whatever. But, um, but we, didn't have, we didn't have any intentional, really deep conversations when I was growing up about, about the Bible. I guess my parents really thought going to church would get it all there, get whatever I needed in me. But that wasn't the case. It's not the case. You know, church is not going to be your where your kids get what they need. So not all of it. Not all of it. So um, we started dating. We were the summer. We both turned twenty-two, and um, I asked her to marry me like uh, three times. She said no, um, and her basic objection was uh, she wasn't gonna marry nobody. Didn't walk with the Lord. But on the flip side, I would tell her, I, was like, I can't tell you walking with the Lord, you know, and and she would always say, fair enough, you know. Uh, um, but um, in 1997, I, uh, I, the man, the Lord just laid me low in my living room and called me to himself. He's just so faithful and good. And what I immediately knew was I didn't know how to be Christian. And then I didn't know how to be a Christian, fill in the blank. I mean, just any, any next word. How, do, how to be a Christian friend. How to be a Christian boyfriend. I knew I really, I really knew I wanted to marry this lady. I, I had no idea how to be a decent husband, not less a husband who would love his wife like Christ loved the church. And, um, you know, I talked to Karen and, Karen knew more than I did, but she didn't know how to live her life intentionally for Christ. The, you know, the church didn't disciple her in that way. It was always something to do, but they didn't say, this is how you walk with Jesus. Yeah. She didn't get instruction on being a Christian wife. She didn't, you know, just none of that. None of that. None of right. that. And so uh, there began our journey of saying, well, what do we do? And I said, well, just go to church. And I say, hmm. You know? Really? He said, really? You just go? I was like, yeah, you just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, I didn't even know how to go to church. My wife, my girlfriend at the time says, Tim, you just go. I go, you don't just go to church. It's like, actually, you just go. And I didn't believe her. I said, it's got to be more to it than that. Turns out, you can just go. But um, we started going. I started studying the scriptures. As a matter of fact, the very night I got saved was in March, March 2nd, 1997. I opened my Bible to Matthew Chapter 1, verse 1, and I read all the way to Matthew 6, 33. I'll never forget it as long as I live. Why? Because there's only one more verse in, in Matthew 6. I didn't even finish it. I read Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. The question that was flaming in my mind was, what do I do now? I'll never forget it. I had a little brown Bible. Uh, I still got it. It's falling all to pieces. I, I, I slammed it shut. I, okay. Okay i got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That's what i got to do. And I went to bed just like that. I was like, Lord, I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and, uh, and that became my immediate measuring point for everything. That was honestly my first mission statement. It's like, what does it look like to seek Christ first right here? So I went to work that next day, and a guy was giving me a hard time. And that was the question that was burning in my mind. What does it seek Christ first right here? Okay, A, Jesus probably wouldn't kill him. You know, it turned out later on, I find the words, you know, bless your enemies, bless those that persecute you, love your enemies. I didn't have the language right then. I just knew Jesus probably wouldn't knock this guy out at work. I'm not sure he wouldn't, but I don't think he would. And that sort of became my first mission statement. Later on, as we're getting married, I'm, I'm literally trying to find out, well, what, what, you know, what does it look like to have a, a mission statement for my family, something I can check. I'm just studying the Bible one day. And I come up on Joshua uh, 24, 15. And just for the sake of time, I'll paraphrase it. But, you, you know, it's a famous verse. Joshua is basically telling all of the Hebrew people, it's like, listen, if y'all want to go back to Egypt over there, okay, if you, if you think it's right, if you think it's good for you to go back to that land of pagans, that lifestyle of walking without God, if y'all think that's right, then y'all go on and do that. As for me and my house, and those words captured my heart. The other one was, you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. This was. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So this is the way everything happens with me and care. 
Here, I read something in the Bible. Me and you, our house, we're going to serve the Lord. And Kara's like, okay. Because, <laughs> you know, like, I, I'm, whatever I'm about, I'm passionate. Like, Duke's mayonnaise, everything else is white garbage. I'm just trying to tell you. So that's the way it usually goes with us, right? Yeah, I'll be like, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm just, and, and when I saw that, he said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. In that I saw, here's the big picture of what we're not going to do. We're not going to return to where we come from. Amen. Anybody, if you, if you, if you're getting saved was anything like mine, you feel me when you say, I ain't going back over there. Right. I ain't going back over there. So I felt that. When I looked at my family history, we knew we didn't want to, we, we didn't want a history like that. We didn't want a history like either one of us, even though we we're always fed. I mean, that's a blessing. Yeah. What was the next thing? We want to serve the Lord. We want our family to be about serving the Lord. Yep. So then we had to find out what did God value. And that became our earliest family mission statement. And we, uh, we had a little sign. We put it up in our house. And, you know, I told you guys before I like sports. I remember for a long time, I'd walk out and touch a sign like, like the football guys that, he did. He really did. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm serving the Lord. Wherever I go, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to serve the Lord today. And, um, and so, yeah, that kind of became our deal for a while. Um, yeah. So let's, let's talk about, what, um, about the most basic elements of creating a family mission statement. That was her way of telling me to hush. <laughs> well, <laughs> I thought she was done. Anyway, so if you have little kids, you know that it's not reading or whatever, so then this probably is a mom and dad thing like it was for us when we first started to begin with. Yeah. To begin with. But if you do have older kids, then you need to bring them into the conversation. You know, they need to be a part of it because they're part of your family, right? And, um, and so what do you start with? You start with a plan. You start with an intentional, like, okay, I'm putting this on the schedule. This is when we're going to talk about our family mission statement. And maybe it's at date night, the next one. Maybe it's at your fa next family night when you play games and that kind of thing. Or maybe it's just like, okay, Thursday night after dinner, we're going to stay at the table and we're going to keep talking and we're going to start talking about it. So you've got to be intentional. Literally put it in your schedule um, and start the conversation. Start the conversation. And uh, whether it's just, you know, um, you know, you might have baby, uh, like I, I'll, I'll pick on destiny here. You know, your, your kid's just small. Like you say, I'm not going to have this, you know, this super big, serious discussion with my small child, right? Or um, maybe you're like, you know, Shannon, where his kids are grown-ish and uh, uh, trying his soul at every turn. And, and uh, he's sitting there thinking, I don't even know if I can get him to have a conversation, you know. Uh, wherever you're at on the spectrum, right, just engage where you are. It's okay, all right? So if you're just at that parent level, you start the discussion between yourself. If, um, I, and, and I also want to tell you this. Maybe you run up on somebody and they're parenting all alone. You start in the process, you can invite them into a partnership with your family. That's really powerful. Maybe if they're, if they're parenting alone for whatever reason, um, you know, you start thinking about, well, who's a real trusted friend that I can begin a discussion with? But you got to put it on the calendar, and you got to open the discussion. And I think there's four big pieces that you have to start with. You know, what are our values? What are my values? Or, or, or if the family's in the discussion, you ask them, what do we value? What are our goals as a family? Um, what are some dreams? And, and, and I want to interject right here. It is great to have dreams. Dreaming is free. It's great to have kingdom dreams, and it's great to have uh, dreams on God's green earth. He gave us this green earth to enjoy. Like one of ours is we want to see all 50 states. We're this close. Yes, this close. We're this close to doing it. We only put our foot down in Ohio. Turns out that was too much. Um, <laughs> that's dead serious. Pulled over the interstate and went, Ohio. Um, but, um, you know, what are your values? What are your goals? What are your dreams? And then notice all three of those are big positives. They're big positives. What do we want to pursue? Pursuit is big time. And then I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to counterpoint that with one sort of negative. Mm -hmm. What are some possible pitfalls that we have to think about strategically? Um, and they're basically these big questions. Where do you want to go in life? What do you want to accomplish? Who do you want to be? Your whole family. Who do we want our family to be? 
and uh, what do you want to avoid? So let me tell a, a you know a, a negative story and a positive story. I'll give you a positive story from yesterday. Um, uh, my good young friend, you know Paul Bailey. Um, some of you guys know the Bailey family. My good young friend Paul Bailey walks into the dodgeball room here, and I'm I'm narrating a dodgeball game in a low ceiling room, so you know it's already entertaining. And uh, the Paul, kids love it. The kids love it. Yeah. They do. Paul walks up and he says, I, I, I hear you saw my brother this weekend. His brother's in college in another town. And, uh, and he, you know, he basically asked me, how was it seeing, you know, you know, that good Will Bailey? And I says, wait a minute. As far as I know, I've never had a bad inter interaction with any Bailey. And, uh, and I mean that. Whatever they're doing as a family, I always have a good time with all the Baileys, Right. And so, you know, whatever they've decided to be with their attitude and that stuff, I always have great engagements with them. Yet we've always seen that thing, right? I had three older brothers in school. I would run up on the teacher and they go, oh, you're one of those Boses, right? Because whatever we're doing, we're leaving some kind of legacy. Am I right or am I right? You're right. So asking, you know, as part of creating a family mission statement, you know, what do we want to be? What do we want to avoid and how do we shape our everyday life to, 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 go, to go toward that and avoid that? So you have to ask yourself, oh, you, need, you no, got go one ahead. more story. I, I forgot. That was it. Okay, so you have to ask yourself and your family a lot of life questions. A lot of questions. You know, and you're going to be talking about, um, because we're Christians. So, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what is God's mission for our church? And then what is our part in it? And so there are two parts to that. And it's character, like who are we? And then it's commission, what we do. You know, what does God want us to do? And so, like, I think if your family mission statement is going to be like, we're going to have fun. And so then every weekend you're asking, like, <laughs> did we have fun? fun? <laughs> yeah. Did fun? we even try to have fun? Do we have a good time? You know? Um, or uh, now one uh, example is, like, you think about a river. And you have to decide if you're the leaf or a boat on the river. And so if you're a leaf, the, leaf, the river just takes the leaf wherever, wherever it's going, and the leaf just goes. But a boat has to be steered, so then you've got to think about, okay, well, who's going to steer it? Who's going um, to be doing the rudder? Is that I the like right that. Word? Yes, yeah. rudder. The yeah. rudder. Or, or, yeah. or if you're on a canoe, it's an oar. And so, I mean, the simple answer is we won't. In our family, we want God to do it. We want God yeah. to be steering it. And I think your mission statement has to answer that. Like, where are we going and who's directing this thing? Or are we just sort of floating along? Yeah. And I, I think a lot of folks spend their time floating along. Or thinking that other places are going to do what they think. And, and I guess I find that really dangerous because I op part of my opening was telling you guys that I don't do so well just floating along. And we got to be intentional. Got to be intentional. Yeah, so character and commission. If, if you're not a believer, like, let's get philosophical for a second. Uh-oh. <laughs> Just kidding. If you're like a secular humanist, like, you think you're just here enjoying this for a time, and when it's over, it's all over. Mm. And so you're, you're basically saying life is a lemon, and I got to squeeze it and get everything good because this is it. Mm -hmm. But we believers have a transcendent worldview. We believe there's a God above and there's a, there's a future beyond this. Yeah. And so, uh, on, you know, sort of, it, it's not negative, but it feels negative. You say, first, I've, I've got to face God, but then I also say I get to face God. See God face to face. And I want to think when I see him, y'all know what I want to hear, what I'm excited about hearing. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Oh, man, I can't wait for that, right? right? So so I'm just asking myself, does my family mission statement look like I know that? Does it look like I know that I'm not just trying to enjoy the garden? Mm -hmm. What's God's goal with the garden? And I've got to stand in front of God when the garden's done, you know? Yeah, so we got to talk about how this really is an um, involved process. It's an involved process. Yeah. Um, big thing, first thing first, ask big questions. Carrie, would you give out our handout real yes, quick? Yes, of course. And uh, just, as soon, yeah, just as soon as she hands that out so you can follow along, I'm going to share with you our family mission statement. 
Okay. Oh, Brett. Brett's helping us, guys. Um, and you're going to see our family mission statement. Okay. Confession. I am the height of ridiculous. Your family mission statement does not have to be this long. Brett, when you asked me to do this session, I immediately thought, my goodness, they're going to see this. All right, but I'm, I'm hyper ridiculous. Yeah, but wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, guys. All right, so um, our kids are 17 and 20. Yeah, because Kara's old. And, um, but we had them when they were younger. We did. We did. We did, yeah. They started out less aged than they are. And so, you know, when they were real little, you know, our basic, very basic idea about, you know, our family mission statement was, was this simple. And it was this way for years. We live love, which is kindness in action. We love God with all our thoughts, words, emotions, and strength. We love others like we are showing love to ourselves. And that became the, the discussion we have with our kids about everything. How is this helping us love God? How is this loving each other? All right, what is love? It's, it's kind action. We already want our kids just to think about love as a feeling. So we kept telling them, it's action. Love is action. For God so loved the world that he did what? Gave. Gave. Gave what? His son. Only begotten son. Love is action. So early in our kids' life, we wanted our mission statement to be tied to God's, God's nature, his character, his personhood. Love. God's activity, love. And we were real intentional about all, even the little things. Yeah. Like, like when they were fighting. Yeah, talk about that. Exactly or, you know, like, in, to you young parents, parenting is, it takes a lot of time. Blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, like, you have to give up a lot of stuff. you like, man, I just want to go home and put, what, eat some supper and watch TV all night. And you can't, I mean... I, I feel like you can't do that. You really got to have a conversation. So when they start fighting, then you have to take a minute and have to really talk about the emotions, the words they're using. Yeah, and, and let me talk about a negative here. Yeah. Me growing up, my parents didn't mind us fighting. It was one of two ways. When we were arguing or fighting, it was one of two things. We would hear, I know this is strong language, we would hear, shut up mm. or take it outside. <laughs> And we'd have to assess, is this something we kind of want to go outside over? And a lot of times it was. And they didn't care. They was like, you're not going to tear my house up, but you can kill each other. It's fine. Um, we have a lot of y'all, you know. And um, we did. We literally would go outside and duke it out, right? So I knew, I knew that that did not foster a healthy family, did not foster loving relationships. And I knew even young that it would be highly unlikely that I would have a great relationship with my brother's in adulthood, right? I knew it. But at the time, I'm like, that'll be a relief. Hmm. Care's whole motivation for having a second kid was that I didn't want Katie to be alone if something happened to me and Tim. I want her to have somebody that she could count on and be there for her. Ooh. My whole motivation for having a second kid is I can't have five if I don't have number two. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, honey. You should be. <laughs> So anyway, go back to talking about how do we have these discussions with them when they were fighting and stuff. You just did it. I mean, I don't, yeah, it's just as simple as that. And then you brought in things like what God expects and, and what Jesus says and how you, the, Jesus says you forgive people. And you have the conversation. And you have it every single time. And when they're little, it's every day. Every day. Every, remember I told you, you feel like saying... <laughs> Didn't I tell you? <laughs> yes. But we just kept going there. And we're still going there. And we still go Because, I mean, they're 17 and 20. We all still live in the same house. And some days they still don't know how to talk to each other. <laughs> and none, the 20-year-old is just like this one. No. No, I don't mean that like that. <laughs> the other day they argued about how to cook something. It was, it was, a, it was a heated discussion. It wasn't an argument. <laughs> and Tim's like, what are y'all arguing about? Yeah, and I'm like, no, literally, I go to like, is this who we want to be? Yeah. I mean, we will literally Jesus juke ourselves because that's what we need. 
you know, we'll, it's not just our kids. I, Jesus juke my wife. You know what was cool? Both of them received it. Yeah, because I, they, I wanted to do it the way I always done it. And Katie's like, Mama, there's a different ways to do things. And so in the end, she's right. And we tried her way, and it was wonderful. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> All right, so that, I, I threw that one in there. And we've had a couple of manifestations in between. But here's the current one. It's yeah. a year old. It's a year old. All right, you can follow along. I'm just going to read it out loud. Okay, I know it's long. Give me a break, guys. It's good, though. I'm a pastor. This is how it is. Because God has chosen us in Christ and has made us holy through his love, we are kind and compassionate toward all. We strive to be humble before God and man, and in that pursuit to consider others before ourselves. We seek to love each other well, remembering we can only do it because Christ loved us first. We grant forgiveness when we are wronged and seek forgiveness when we are wrong, and we do so because Christ has forgiven us. We seek to refuse the grip of worry and living in the grip of grace instead live as people of prayer. We live as thankful people, not taking the grace of the Lord in vain. We work hard and live with generosity. We believe God's word. We treasure its truth, holding it up as the practice of faith. We use God's word to teach, encourage, and disciple one another. We preach to our own hearts and to one another through singing truth and citing scripture. We remember everything belongs to the Lord. And in whatever we do, we seek to do it as unto the Lord. We believe hope is a fixed expectation, and we hope in the return of Christ, knowing he will finish the work of salvation he has begun in us through Christ Jesus our Lord. The King has come. He is coming. By the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, we expect to bear fruit for God's glory unto the return of the King. Let me ask you guys, did you guys see any recurring themes in that? Anybody? Any recurring themes? Somebody said something, but I'm deaf. All right, yes, a lot of seeking, so it's no claim to perfection. It helps us ask the question, it helps us ask the question, are we even trying? Are we, you know, are we even going after that? You know, like, if, if it hadn't here, we're seeking to dunk. And you said, have you even tried dunking lately? <laughs> no. So I'm not living on mission. What else? See any other recurring themes? Believe. believe. Yes, believe. Believe. Thank you. Delayed hearing. We think what we believe should show up in how we behave. And we think how we behave should have a reference in what we claim to believe. Any other recurring themes? What's our, what's our primary reference example in, in everything we're, we're talking about here? Did you say Christ? I thought I heard somebody say I couldn't tell where it came from. Christ. So in other words, we're not saying, my grandma said, as smart as my grandma was, she ain't as good as Jesus. So it's not just the carrying on a family tradition, it's the carrying forward of God's plan for the family. We're not just trying to replicate old time sentimentality. That helps us escape some of the prisons we had as family in our past. Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say something. Well, I was just going to say... Um I, I want to reiterate here that we, Tim said we are not um, perfect. Like, we're not ex claiming to be experts, and our children are not perfect. So, please, if you see them out and they're arguing or something, you know, like, okay, Carrie said they weren't perfect. Read them the mission statement. <laughs> read them the mission statement. That's right. Hit them with a stick and read them the mission statement. But I also want to say, like, just real quick, and I know this is not part of it, but because of the mission statement or always thinking about – this since they were little and trying to be intentional it made us think about even when they were little like going to church and having life together in our house every Monday you know like 
that kind of thing, or making sure that they were at C3, which is a children's program, or at youth, or, and I'm not saying the kids, they, and they haven't been to every one, don't, don't think that. Yeah, let me, let me interrupt, because yeah. one big thing for us is it's not go there because that's where we're supposed to be. This is who we're trying to be, and that's an agency to let us live out our values. Yeah, and then Big I difference. also want to surround them with other people that love the Lord, not just me yeah. and Tim. You know, so they can see that it's in other people's lives, too. And the fellowship, I mean, who don't love fellowship at church, you know? It's wonderful. Yeah, but I, yeah, I want to yeah. say it again because it's something I'm very passionate about. We don't go there because it's this yeah. time and that's where we go. We right. go there because it helps us live out the reception and the expression of these values. We get around people pouring into us. And we're challenged to live what we say we believe, to behave what we say we believe. And if you don't think walking with a church family will try your soul, you ain't been lately. Even though I got the best one in the world. Well, we do. We do. We, we, that ain't the point. I know. I'm sorry. Just being in community is hard. It is hard. That's right. It's hard. I'm sorry. I got off track. Yeah, I blame you for everything. Um, so... So, um, let me have that. Yes. I had a quote at the bottom. Mm -hmm. well. All right. So, that being said, we got kind of a big one. I want you guys to look all the way at the bottom of this paper. Uh, I literally, literally, um, right before I hit print, I said, let me write a simple one. And I wrote this one. Let me read that one and you follow along. As a family, our mission is to love each other, to serve one another, I, well, I didn't mean to put each other there, to serve one another, to believe the best about each other, and to want the best for each other, to use our time, talent, and treasure to please God and serve the world, and to know God and enjoy Him together forever. Let me ask you guys a question. You guys see any, you see any, can you think of any Bible verses when you read that real simple one? Any Bible verses come to your mind? Mine comes to do unto others as you want them to do unto you is what comes to my mind. Right. What we often call the golden rule, yeah. right? Um, actually, I thought of two Bible verses when I wrote that. Um, uh, I thought of John 13. I thought of the Great Commission. And I thought of a saying by Augustine of Hippo. I actually sort of quoted him in the end. The chief end and aim of man is to know God and enjoy him forever. And he said it a little bit different, and the Westminster Confession took it as uh, uh, catechism question number one. What, you know, see, our mission statement is to, to do what God told us to do. But it really, it really becomes a point of reference when you're trying to figure out problem solving and taking on activities in your family, like not just do you want to do this, but where does this fit in our mission? You know, where does this... So, uh, somebody in here is likely you, you went to dance, your daughter goes to dance, you want your daughter to go to dance. So be honest. Is there anything wrong with taking dance class? No. No, I might take one one day. Ooh. I've been thinking about hip-hop dance classes. <laughs> I don't know why it's funny. All right. But what if your kid went to dance class and they saw it as a mission field? Where a place where they lived intentionally. And what if you said, if we can't be on mission there, according to our values, according to our family statement, that's something we're not going to do. We can revisit it. But if you can't see how that allows you to pursue then it's something we got to back up from. Or maybe some guys in the room, I'm looking at Shannon, you made me think of this, maybe your kid wants to join the volunteer fire department. You know, they like being crazy firemen, right? You ask the same questions. How is this putting you on mission? They say, well, you know, it's good to put fires out of people's houses on fire. You say, think a little bit deeper. Where is this going to let you live out our family mission? Can you see how this begins to shape not just that you know something sort of spiritual to say, but you, you start to challenge, are we on mission with God? Does this allow us to be mission, on mission with God? Does it prevent us from being on mission from God? 
when our kids tell us about having some problem with some friend, we take them to our stated goals and God's word. And we've already agreed as a family. This is what we value together. We value this together. You got anything to say right here? No, sir. Please do. No, give them some time to. Okay, well, no, I didn't realize I was doing this live. We can't do oh. this. Yeah. So at this point, I, I put in a quote for, I found in a magazine a long time ago from Focus on the Family magazine. Um, this lady was saying if you're trying to, you know, do a family mission statement, if, you, if, you, if you'll just create some fill-in-the-blank statements, and I took her list, it can help you get started, right? But because we're live here, I think what we'll do, Brad, how many minutes is it? It's eight-ish now, right? Okay, okay. Uh, I'll take two questions. Anybody got a question? Will this reach? No, I, we're going to repeat it. Oh, that sorry. was in the instructions <laughs> that the leaders got. Sorry, guys. It's been a long day. Anybody got any questions? Kelly. Okay. Kelly's question is, if you have a family mission statement, when do you change it? Okay, so there's all sorts of um, theories about uh, when, when kids move out of this sort of level of things to the next level. Um, um, if you'll look at that thing you got in the first session from the Search Institute, they have some age categories here, and I've always tried to think about, I'm not saying they're right, it just gave me a way to look at it. It gave me something to think about. All right, as our kids are both you know, maybe at the end of one phase, because they're three years apart, and the other one's, you know, in the beginning of a phase, the other one's at the end of a phase, let's revisit. Let's adultify. But if you'll notice our simple family mission statement from a long time ago and our long one, they're basically the same. They're just appreciating that we know our kids are way more intelligent now. And not just intelligent, they're way more, um, they're dealing with life in a deeper way. Not that they're more intelligent. Life is... More complex, that's what I want to say. Mm. So you, you look at, and you know, you guys got like 17 kids, something. <laughs> you know, so that spectrum, it, it, you know, it might be tougher. So what you might have to do is have a real general one and then nuance it with a lot of discussions, which you have waiting in traffic and eating chicken nuggets and, you know, you reference the deeper discussion to the, whole family mission statement. Does that make sense? But I'll tell you what, when uh, the younger kids usually have the benefit of every, every, every sibling above them. You know, like the geese, the, the head goose is taking on the most wind. Um, man, I, I know I'm smarter than all my brothers. I know it. Yes. No, really. I, I'm better looking too, right? Absolutely. But it's not because I'm smarter, it's because I had my mom and my dad and three older brothers and I got to learn from all of them. You see what I'm saying? They helped me. And so what's neat is the older kids are breaking you in and the younger kids will get the benefit of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Another question, one more. And care will answer. Well, it looks like you did a good job but there aren't any questions. Oh, it could have been terrible, and they just ready to go. Yeah. Hey, maybe for just say for the people online, if they're interested in this handout that you gave, they can reach out to you or Brett. And, oh, yeah. Um, they could oh, yeah, and I'll fix this one little grammatical thing here. Yeah. Anybody? Nobody? Uh, getting started. If you're not a natural wordsmith, it's intimidating to think about putting down some words. And so the whole reason I told... The stories about the scriptures is because that was my first words. It weren't even my words. Mm. <laughs> and like, um, I have, I brought, I just knew somebody was going to ask that question, Brett. So here's my list of mission statements. Um, uh, you, you know what my li life in general, that's what's on here. My in general mission statement is just Romans 12, 1 and 2, verbatim. I also might say the hardest part is being the intentional that every single day that you done said the same thing a hundred times and they still hadn't heard it. And um, in my case, holding each other accountable as mom and dad because sometimes I'll be like, just go to your room. 
you know, and tell me like, care. You can't just send them to the room. You got to explain it. You got to talk about it. Or I'll tell him, you know, you can't just leave and go to work. You got to deal with this before you go kind of thing. And she'll and so, rightly get on me sometimes about my attitude. It's not just doing something. It's doing it with the right spirit because, uh, you know, I'm still struggling to let go of that. Shut up and sit down. And, you know, I don't say that because I think it's very hurtful and rude, yeah, but I do say, say it, if that makes sense. I see you say it like this. You heard what I said. Yeah. And uh, So that's hard. That can be hard in the yeah. moment, you know, because nobody wants somebody else to tell them, hey, check yourself. Care be nagging. <laughs> All right, it's time is up. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bad attitude. Care's nagging. And we need each other. That's right. So I'd say another hard part, Brad, is staying open to helping each other stay on mission. It's very hard. Because what you do is they're telling you, hey, remember we're doing this thing? And you just want to tell them, leave me alone. Let me easy parent a moment instead of right parent. Mm -hmm. Telling you to straighten up. We have a few more messages if you'd like to pass on, Kelly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, you need the mic. Oh, yeah. Here, come take mine. That's your room. Yeah, yeah. I'll walk. I'll walk away. Man, so there's a, there's a lot of pressure in society on how you should raise your family. Um, oh yeah, I got to get closer. You can see me now. You can see my face. There's a lot of pressure on what you should be doing as a family, what you should be doing, how you should raise your kids. Everybody's trying to tell you what to do. If you're part of a big family, everybody wants something from you and wants you to be at everything. And your goals might not be the same goals as the rest of your family's. And so when you literally have a plan for your family and other people are pressuring you to do something, it becomes really easy to say, no, that's not what we're going to do, what we're going to pursue. And in that, if you're raising your kids up and you know, all their friends are different and your friends are coming and saying, I need a cell phone because all of my friends have one. You're like, you know, this, that, you're, you're eight years old, you're three, you don't need a cell phone. Like you don't, it doesn't fit what we want to accomplish. And as you continually raise your kids in this, and that's the pattern you raise them in, they know why you say no to certain things and don't say no to certain things, and why you allow this and don't allow that. And so when things are tough and there's pressure from other places to do something in this way or that way, it's easy to have someone go, no, this is not what we're going to be about. And so I like that part about it. Um, it's freed me from a lot of pressures that are, are unnecessary pressures. I don't, I don't have to be like everybody else because I know what my goal and my mission is. And so, all right, man, guys, thank you all so much for coming out. If you're online still watching with us, thank you for watching. Um, we're going to have other breakouts recorded and load them up. So if you all missed one of the ones and you want it, if you look in your book, there's a little QR code that will take you to a YouTube playlist. If you're online and want that, send us a message or comment on our Facebook page or email us or whoever you want to do to get in touch with us. Um, we're going to make those things available. We're going to pray and close. Father, this work is hard, but this work is good. This work is stressful and time-consuming, but it ultimately leads us as parents to you, and it will lead our kids to you. Father, encourage us to press into this, to press into the body as they press us to press into this. Um, God, help us to support one another. Help us to love one another through this and encourage each other. God, thank you for your words that lead us to you. In your name we pray. Amen.